What's good, What's fam? Good? What's good? You doing all right? Yes, sir. How about yourself, man? I'm doing good, just hustling, you know, thriving, pivoting, making shit shake. I hear you, man. Hey, thank you for just starting off and just uh, coming, you know, onto the platform. I appreciate for that sure. so much, man. No doubt, no doubt. I appreciate you for asking me to come on. Anytime, man. Uh, starting off, bro, how did you get started <laughs> within uh, the fashion game? How did that start? Uh... I majored in fashion, and I grew up in church, so uh, my style kind of came from church. Um, okay. So, I'm, and I always say I'm in fashion, but I'm really not in fashion because I'm, I'm more in branding and lifestyle uh, and different things like that. So, yeah, I mean that's how I got into fashion. I majored in it, and uh, and then my roots of like my style came from church because my stepdad's a pastor. My mom, she was the first lady. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Hey, I'm a PK as well, so I can. Relate. I heard. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Small world, man, small world. And, I mean, speaking, you know, on that same point, growing up, like myself as well, like, I started loving fashion from, like, wearing suits, getting dressed up, and, you know, also, like, casual wear as well. Um, when did you realize that you had a knack for branding, too? Um, Over time, as I built my business, you know, it's something that came natural. Um, and I feel like the lifestyle aspect of it really played a big part in the branding because I know what people like to see how they want to see it, and then also what kind of, like, um, response I'm about to get from somebody based on the way I present myself, gotcha. I present something to them. Uh, so branding has just become something that's just come natural to me, and um, I can, somebody could literally put their business in front of me or their idea in front of me. I could, like, I could brand it, and I could also, like, have them step-by-step -step ways that they can actually build it. You know, it can become profitable, and it can just be something they can really do if it's a passion or if it's just, like, a side hustle. You know, it's branding. And just having that gift of being able to see uh, uh, into somebody's future is like really, it's like crazy, bro. So that's how, that's when I, and I would say, what what year was that when I found that out? It was like, bro, it was, it was like, it was like beginning of last year. Okay. Maybe. Or in the maybe beginning when I when I really like tapped into it, I'm like, yo, I, I'm good at branding. Like, I need to like actually help people with this shit. That was yeah. probably like last year, <clears throat> like the beginning of last year, end of end of 2018, when I was really like, bro, I need to start helping people do this because I see what I'm doing with my brand. So I mean, I can help other people um, do the same thing with theirs. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, even speaking, you know, on that same point as well, how did you start learning how to monetize that skill? uh through my own business because everything is organic through my shoe company um and everything is organic through my personal page as well uh so it's really just came from like self just once you uh it's just trial and error for me mm -hmm. so i go through it myself and then i can teach other people the way and the ropes from that um and then also having to think outside of the box and and, and figure out multiple ways to do it like one thing um that's caused me to you know just really uh monetize everything that i it, i monetize anything i monetize myself I monetize oh, like I monetize this 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 face this uh yeah. this this uh, live. I love monetize that. my guys, digital products, the shoes. Yeah. Um, other people, I can monetize whatever the fuck you put in front of me. To be honest. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Hey, that's smart. It's being a businessman. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I saw with your shoes, great quality, bro. I love exactly you know what you're doing, like oh, the brand, the everything. You know the vibes. You know the vibes. You don't play no games, I love bro. it. Don't Look at games. that. You know the vibes. Hey, quality. that's not quality. That's yes, high quality, man. Like for real. Hey, I salute that. And I'm sorry, I'm on your website. Uh, you were on a panel and you were speaking to straight facts where you know you were talking about like knowing your value as an entrepreneur. Oh, you saw that one. As a creator. Um, how important is it for our generation to really focus on knowing our value? Because I think sometimes, you know, when we get stuck in the nine and fives that we forget about the value that we even bring to that company. So how can we start realizing the value that we bring? <clears throat> you realize well, one I mean, there are a lot of people that are just that just love nine to five. So I had a conversation with this uh, with somebody the other day. Uh, they were he was talking about like um, his mom was a teacher, mm -hmm. and she really just loved teaching. And I'm like, yeah, you know, a lot of people just really love what they're doing. But if you don't love what you're doing, you're wasting your fucking time. If you're not doing something you don't love, you're wasting your time. So I feel like passion plays a huge part in people realizing their true value. Uh, so I gave an example in, my, in one of my digital guides. Uh, I asked the person, like whoever's reading it, I asked, okay, think about something that your friends come to you for all the time. They ask you for advice on, on this outfit or they ask you for advice on their next business move or they ask you for advice on if they should go here or go there or they should like jump into this next business deal. So <clears throat> if you take note of that and you start to realize how, what the people around you value about yourself, um, then you can actually like always take, a, take strides in that direction and then like take it slow. So once you put it out there, 
after your like surrounding friend group or the people you work with or whatever, they like see value in it, then it's up to you to have that like um you have to believe in yourself. Like I feel like everybody right. in this moment it's it's important to like connect with self and, and really understand what value you bring to the table. So once you connect with your st yourself, you're confident in that and you make that first step, the second step follows. So I feel like it's really just taking that first step on what you love doing, what you're passionate about and what people around you found, find value in and stepping out on faith with that. And then over time you become more confident. And then also <clears throat> that, that changes the way you, uh, you know, approach other people, you know? So I feel like over time the, you, you, you realize the value you have based on just experience, you know, yeah. actually just doing it, you have to do it. Um, but then, but then I guess first, before you even know that you have something that is of value, um yeah I, I think the friend the friend the circle your circle that's where it kind of like starts you know what do they value about you yeah. um <clears throat> and then from there really stepping out on faith and seeing if other people outside of your friend circle really like value that too and um i think that's that, that'll be like some kind of like steps to get towards it that's respect bro and being a young entrepreneur man what are some of the challenges that you face when it comes to fashion branding um with just charging for your product because i know sometimes that you probably face people will say oh can i get a discount or why are you yeah. charging this much but then those same people buy louis gucci all the name brands so what are yeah. some of those challenges in that yeah challenge challenges would be funding um also getting support from their own community um because we we devalue our own selves and we don't mm -hmm. consider black to be luxury when actually when actually you know black brands black is luxury it's not discounted it's not lower quality it's not bad customer service it's actually like there is value within you know black luxury brands so right. um i'm really big on actually creating luxury black brands something that's like you know timeless and since we're not used to seeing that it's a challenge to actually like get that into the community to where it's like oh it becomes something that's normalized to where you see a black owned shoe or a black owned hat that costs 500 dollars, and it's actually like known that oh this shit is really worth 500 because of the quality matching the other brands that have, you know, built up over over hundreds of years, uh, you know, the brand name is very, carries a lot of weight. It carries more weight than, you know, my brand carries. But, you know, uh, I can't, I also can't expect people to support just because they're black, you know. Mm, uh, okay. Even, yeah. even, even, even though it's like, I would expect my brother to, you know, see my face and see me promote my brand and want to support without getting a discount. But... It's something that, to where you know inside we 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 got this crabs in the bucket mentality. We don't want our, our home, this um, like person that looks like us to make it before us. Um, and we also just I've heard people say I'm I'm not entitled to I don't have to purchase from you just because you're black. Um, so I mean that's another that's a whole other conversation that we can speak on. But um, those are like two of the challenges: funding and then also uh, support from the people within your community. Uh, even though that's where the the bulk of my supports come from. Yeah. I feel like if uh even if celebrities <clears throat> if more celebrities understood the importance of not just asking for a free a free product and really understood the the value of uh purchasing a product, getting it at their career, actually wearing it, actually tagging that brand uh without asking for a discount because they can't just go straight to Louis like to the <laughs> owner and be like, Hey, you know, let me get let me get that discount real quick. Hey, you that's know? Real. They, <laughs> they might they might, you know, source you out and then they they have to also understand that the small businesses can't afford to cut as, as fat of a, of a check as like, you know, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Fendi, Prada can because those brands are, you know, well established where you have a, a, a person with a product like mine where like the overhead is and the cost to produce it is hella expensive and then you sell it and then so many people come wanting to get a free product so where it's like, okay, I can't, I can't survive, you know, yeah. so, yeah. Uh, but we can't, we also can't expect them to understand the the inside of the business because most of them are so big they're they're not really working in their business they're just like the face of it so because they had a cloud and shit like that so you know all the back end stuff really um is blood sweat and tears for us but for them they just see like oh i, I just want the product you know mm -hmm. free and i might not post it you know but pay me though <laughs> yeah hey i get that man um how do you just break down when it comes to networking when it comes to manufacturing like it's a lot that you have to do so how do you even organize all of that stuff how do you do um, Every every yeah, I, I wear I wear a lot of hats, uh, and I feel like when it comes to organization, everybody's different. But mm -hmm. I live based off of my calendar, like fact. I don't even know what day it is, bro. Like <laughs> I couldn't tell you what today. I couldn't tell you what today is, <laughs> but you know, like if it's not in my calendar, then I probably won't be there. But if it's in my calendar, I'm gonna be there on time, and I'm, I'm gonna get it done. Uh, and then when it comes to like the different businesses and different th tasks that I have, um, 
I try to tell people all the time, you know, be sure to, you don't have to do everything for every business every day, you know, because that can get, you know, fucking ridiculous. So I, I always recommend people, you know, dele delegating a specific time slot for this business or, you know, a, a day for this side hustle or something like that, you know, really, really break it up. And, uh, you know, a, as long as you're moving forward, making like small progress is, is better than no progress. So, That's you right. know, take those baby steps and really, um, everybody's different. So, I mean, I could, I could probably handle more on a daily basis than somebody else can handle. So I really can't coach them and be like, Hey, you need to work on this business for 12 hours a day when they, you know, they might have a nine to five and they try, they, they might be tired after that. They got kids and they got to like cook yeah. dinner. They got to do this and do that. Yeah. So uh, it's different for everybody, but when it comes to balance, I definitely recommend, you know, prioritize prior priorities is a big thing. Uh, a lot of people's priorities fucked up. So I would say, make sure you get your priorities in order and understand what's the most important for your business to continue to grow and scale. And if that's running social media and posting consistently, engaging, s sending DMs, you know, doing email marketing, spend a lot of time on that. Mm -hmm. And then if it's less on the back end of like shipping, you know, where you can do that three times a week, you know, you're like, all right, set, set, set your shipping days. But, you know, every day, you know, I have to post on social media. I have to respond to comments. I have to send DMs. I have to, you know, run ads. I have to, you know, send emails or whatever, whatever it may be. Um, so I feel like whatever the most important things are in your business that, you know, allow you to continue to operate and, uh, and keep revenue flowing, you know, put those at the top of the list and then break it down to where it's like, okay, I can do this less within the day or I can delegate less time to this. And then also outsourcing. A lot of people outsource a lot of shit. If you can, if you can afford it, uh, like, like Upwork, you know, get on there and find somebody in another country to, <laughs> to yeah. do emails for you or something like that or run social media. So, um, we're living in the the digital age and, and the um like the technology now is crazy so a lot of shit can be automated too mm -hmm. uh, so automation is a big thing if you if you really find yourself where you're having too much shit to do to do um automate some of it you know i don't i don't really like having apps to post stuff for me on social media but a lot of people can use a third party party app and have it like automatically post it um you can have automatic email campaigns you can have you can have a lot of shit automated so <laughs> automation is a big way to to uh, to answer the the balance and stuff too. I like that, bro. Something on your page that I love is that you're always posting content. And you're finding like creative ways to constantly post content. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, bro. Like, like, how like four times a day for entrepreneurs to like understand that because I think that what you're doing, people need to keep studying. Is that even mm -hmm. if you aren't a film person, to document things, conversations because it's valuable. So how important is it for young entrepreneurs to realize? Even if I'm not in the film space, I still need to be documenting, posting as much as I possibly can. Uh, <clears throat> engagement with videos is a lot better than um, just like just pictures. Um, so I, I highly recommend doing more videos. And also that breaks that that screen through that screen, or some people might say the third wall, um, where you can actually make it to where people are sitting. They feel like they're sitting right next to you, getting the conversation from you, and they they feel like it's a one on one thing. So. Um, I always recommend, you know, videos because people also don't read no more. So it's like they're not really reading your captions. So if you want people to understand something, hear something and, you know, dissect it, really like speaking or sending them. Like, that's why we have voice messages now. That's why you see more videos from people with captions over them, like meme videos. Um, and then like a lot of shorter captions below that because nobody really reads. Even even in your bio, you know, if your bio is in paragraph form, I always coach people to have like bullet because if I come to it, and I, my boy, my boy Henry in here. And that's what I was talking about uh, yesterday. We was talking about his mom being a teacher. What's up, Henry? Okay. Um, but, um, but yeah, even the bio, people, if they don't want to seem overwhelmed, everything has to be like straight to the point, boom, 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 boom. So even there, um, it's not a video, but it's like, it's, it's streamlined to where it's like straightforward. They know what they're about to get. Most important thing at the top, call to action at the bottom, mm. you know? So it's very important, bro. It's, it's, and the smallest things can make the, the biggest difference like even the, the your profile picture people don't understand how important that shit is because if you send a dm to somebody or if you're if you're if you're in the likes or you're in the comment section it, people just scroll through people scroll through and if you, if you have a, an eye-catching like profile picture somebody might stop like oh shit who is this That's like i swear to god if, if i'm getting a lot of followers because i just got featured somewhere i'm scrolling through looking at it um and for verification checks and i'm looking for professional profile pictures because that that shit right there, but you can you can you can have one of your favorite celebrities respond to your shit just because your profile picture is like on point. Wow. Because they because they think you're like somebody of importance. And yeah. then if your page doesn't follow up, 
as an individual of importance when they come to your page, like it's, it's bullshit. Like you don't have it branded the right way. That's why you come to me. Then you're going to lose that DM. You're going to lose that connection. So that's how it is with me all the time. People reach out and I look at their profile picture. I'm like, all right, cool. This, this is cool. And then I go to the page and I'm like, oh, okay, no, no, no. Let me just bag back out. Let me just bag back out this motherfucker real quick. <laughs> so, but yeah, video, video is everything, bro. Uh, and consist consistency. Uh, yeah. But you being consistent is big, but quality over quantity outweighs that. Because if you if you posting bullshit, it's just like posting nothing. So I highly recommend if you can't create quality content on a daily basis and post three to four times a day, you might need to start off posting three four times a week because you need to post quality and you want people to. You don't want to. It, it's just it's just first impression. You know, social media is your resume. Mm. So if your resume ain't clean cut, you know, boom boom boom, you're probably gonna lose that job um, or you're not gonna get that job. <laughs> so. Yeah. If your if your if your social media page isn't laid out, you know, professional quality, uh, straight to the point, and consistent, you're probably gonna lose that connection, that follow you could have got, um, that response you could have got, shit like that, bro. It's it's very very important. So I'm always consistent and try to, um, be on brand with the content that I post. I love that. Yeah, man. that's that's yeah, and having a niche market is very important. I talked about that a lot in my in my digital guides too. Yeah. Um, for personal brand development. Yeah, I love it. It's very big. And bro, I know you can't give too much game because, of course, you got to say something. Oh, for bro, the we guys. good. We give a game. <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to drop another yeah, guy. Bro. Fuck that. I'm giving all the games so they can go <laughs> buy the guys. It's more. It's it's so many gems, bro. It's like I love it. You that. can't you can't give away too many gems because there's always gonna be something else that you forget or yeah, something that you didn't touch on in the, in the in the uh, conversation, and it's gonna always be a different because the, the the digital guides are in in paragraph form, like it's paragraph. So. A paragraph could be read and worded a different way. Like, it, it also depends on people's learning language. People, mm. I posted a video about this the other day. Everybody learns different. Some That's people true. can watch this video and learn some shit from this and go make some shit pop. Some people have to get a digital guide so they can sit, read, highlight, take notes on the side. That's so it, it, whatever your learning language is, bro, it's just as important as your love language. Because if you don't know that learning language, you go, you really won't make it to that point where you become successful because you don't know how the fuck you learn. You, and then... And then you have people here saying, oh, every successful person reads this amount of books in a year, blah, blah, blah. And you feel bad and shit. You're like, damn. I ain't even working. Oh, like, read, man. <laughs> like, I need to try to pick up a book. And then here you go, wasting fucking time, feeling bad. And then, and, and, but if you knew how you learn, you'd be like, hey, fuck that nigga. I, I, I know I, I like to watch videos and I learn better this way. So yeah. then that's, that's another part of confidence. You know, just believing in yourself and knowing, knowing self. It all goes back to the source. I feel like self is the source. Self is source, bro. Self bro, is source. that's powerful, man. That's powerful. And you actually hit on something that I'm experiencing, like, right now. Just recently, after I graduated from college, I started reading more When you graduate? Hmm? When you graduate? Uh, last year, 2019. Uh, how old are you? Uh, 23. Just turned 23. Oh, okay. We, we almost the same age. We almost the same age. Okay. That's what's up. I'm that's 24. What's up, man. But yeah, man, uh, when I graduated from school, I actually started reading more than I was in school. Because, you know, in school, like, they tell you what you got to read. So you're just trying to skim and type up the papers. But I started reading more after school. But also, I realized that, hey, not everybody likes to read. So for right. those entrepreneurs out there that's being drilled in the head, hey, if you don't read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or this book, that book, then you aren't serious. But you just hit on something that said you got to know your learning language. Bro, so yeah, very important. everybody learns differently. So what advice do you have for people that's not into books, but like what you said, who are in the videos? I would experience, I would experiment with different ways of learning. I, like if you have, if you have one goal <clears throat> within the year, let me see, what could a goal be? If you want to start, um, a, you want to introduce a digital product, for example, like I did, I would, I would Google and read articles about like how to start a digital guide or I would read guides from somebody that is giving tips on how to start like introducing digital guides. I will find video platforms that have people that talk about digital products or whatever. Um, I would, I was going to say one more that was, that was going to be very important. Uh, I, I would also think a lot of people love reading books and shit, bro. Like from millionaires, but I'm the type of person I love hands on. I, I love hands on learning and I love like in-person you know, learning. So I, I oh, love yeah. experiencing it. So I feel like I would rather be able to call that millionaire that wrote that book versus saying, hey, I got this book by this millionaire. Because if, 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 if having that book was the key to success, 
we would have a lot of successful people because these are some top selling motherfuckers. That's facts. I never thought about that. And if you and if you if that is the key to success, reading these people's book, yeah. why the hell do we have so many people with these books that's going to their job that they fucking hate and they ain't starting right. a business that's profitable? So I really I push big on knowing these millionaires, sitting down with them, having lunch, experiencing their lifestyle. How do they live? What do they do? Where do they go? Who do they go with? You know, how do they breathe? How do they eat? How do they, what do they drink? You know, I'm trying to be like, okay, this is what, this is what you do. Because once you get into that environment, your mental shifts, your vernacular shifts, and your perspective on life shifts. We get, we get good. We get good right here. Oh, this is good. We get real good right here. I you like this. I like what it's doing. I like what it's going. Yeah. yeah. Learn, no. learn, learning language, bro, is if you don't like reading books, I would say experiment with, with different ways of learning, whether that's video audio because we got audio books now they know they hey, they, they, the we, they got audio books yeah, they know the niggas comments. don't like reading <laughs> they know niggas don't like reading so yeah. they put they introduced audio books yep. people like to listen to shit yeah Podcast. they did it for a reason it's like it's not just because oh we're just gonna do this shit just because <laughs> one of the most successful niggas probably was like oh i don't like reading books and i'm successful as fuck how about we do audio books yeah bro it's it's people really it's like all perspective it's yeah. all perspective I love that, man. I love that. For the people that's, well, I know now not currently because of the virus, but for the people that's working a nine to five, that's stuck in that same grind, what advice do you have for them for those people who have entrepreneurship ideas, but they're afraid to <laughs> go after that because they're stuck in that same mundane cycle? I would say get my digital guides. <laughs> they're $14. No, no, <laughs> no but, but if you're stuck, you stuck in that, but no, for real, if you, if you need some help, click the link up top. Click, click tap over if you're not from my page follow click the link in my bio get the guides but um if you're stuck in that nine to five i would say tap back into your childlike mentality and i say that because i feel like everybody's known what they're passionate about since they were like kids and if you think about it you know work gets in the way degrees get in the way grades get in the way loans get in the way life gets in the way and we have to grow up and we have to be like, oh, shit, I need to pay these bills. So let me go do what I got to do to pay these bills. And we lose connection with um, our true passion and what we truly enjoy in life. So people feel to realize that there is, you can monetize. When I hear you have three different passions, I hear you have three different fucking streams of income. Because you can monetize any fucking thing on earth, bro. Anything. Nigga made millions off of a rock. Water so bottles. If, if you can make, yeah. bro, they sell you something that's free. Yeah. <laughs> if you can make if you can make millions off of a rock, bro, anything that's in your mind, if you just know how to take it out, package it and offer it to the to to like the media, everybody's like, right now in this moment, everybody is on their phone, bro. Everybody in the fucking world is on social media. So it's the perfect time to sit and you ain't you're not going to work. A lot of us not going to work. A lot of us lost jobs. So it's the perfect time to sit, connect with self, understand passion, what you're passionate about, get a digital guide. Join a, a fucking course, yep. watch some videos, and, and just really understand, what okay, what kind of value can I offer to the world, and how can I package it, present it, and promote it? Um, that's, that's, some, that's some more P's. Package, present, promote. Oh, well, let, me, let me write that. Hey, down. you okay. out here giving out quotes, bro. Let me write that more down content real quick. on the way. Wait, <laughs> package, present, promote. It's over with. Facts. What about it? Um, <laughs> but, but, yeah, that's... <laughs> I swear to God, let me write that shit down. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> hey, you good. You good. Hey, we making history right now, y'all. Cause I live by three F's and three P's, and I guess oh, I got man. three more P's now. <laughs> Cause my that. other P's, are, my other P's are passion, purpose, product, mm. um, and my three F's are faithfulness and friendship. Uh, but now that's I got cool. package, present, and promote. Ooh, that's lit, bro. That's I lit. Love as that. fuck. That's lit as fuck. Um, hey, you dropping gems. <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, outside, getting out of nine to five, bro. Really connecting, and like in this moment, understanding what kind of cycle you were in, and how you, how can you get out of this cycle. Because a lot of people are realizing, oh, I really hated my job, or oh, I really don't know what the fuck to do without my boss. So now I have to figure out what I need to do for eight hours in the day. And you got so much time to sit and think and be in your mind and be connected with self to where it's like, bro, I gotta figure something out. Because mm -hmm. this shit could happen again. Yeah. I look at somebody, package, present, promote. Bro, that's I'm, I'm, that's, that's, <laughs> bro, that's another three P's. Oh my life, bro. Oh my life. Package, <laughs> present, promote. Oh. You, yeah, you got some shit that's like, that's gonna be some shit that I'm gonna put out too. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. But um, yeah, nine to five, bro. Like, really, like, connected with passion. Yeah. Um, and really, it takes a lot of faith too to mm. step out. Cause I went, I went full time into my business after I graduated from college. 
Uh, so I never had a job. I never had a job. Um, so the, it takes a lot of faith. And I feel like the only thing that gets you through those hard times is, is like passion. So everything will go back to passion and purpose. And then act, and then I, I would say get a whiteboard and, and write down a lot of different shit. Gotcha. And I would say, what is my why? You know, if you don't have a fucking why, you're going to give up. You're going to be like, why am I doing this? <laughs> I need to go back to work. So if you have a, a why for, your, for you to stand on and you have purpose, you have passion, bro. Like if you want to quit your job and, and you found your passion, you, you've connected with self. And you have the faith um, to do that, bro. It's not every, and then also imagination and dreams is a big thing too. If you can imagine it, it's a glimpse into your future, so it's obtainable. So you have to just think it, speak it, and then write it. Like I just wrote that shit down. Mm -hmm. I thought it, I spoke it, I wrote it. That is some powerful shit when you do that. So if you're thinking about something you want to do, and you just leave it there, you just remain. It just remains a thought, and you just go back to work. You 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 just made steps backwards because yep. you were just presenting something in your mind <clears throat> that's right around the corner from which from like where you are right now. So yep. as soon as you imagine something, you know, start writing shit down, start planning, start plotting. You know, don't go into the nine to five thinking, oh, this is where I'm gonna be for the rest of my life. Because if yep. you live in for Friday and you living not to make it to Monday, you hating when Monday come around, mm. like you you in the wrong you in the wrong place. So and you wasting a lot of fucking time. Um, so <clears throat> do do five do five times however many fucking, you know, weeks in the year and see how many days you're wasting in the year. Because, like, mm. five days out of the week, bro, and you only getting two days um, on the weekend, and that shit, go, part of that, go to church, and then Saturday, go to the park and family. You know, you really ain't got a lot of time to just really live your life and live in your purpose and live in your, like, what you're passionate about. So I really think about that alone, bro, just write down how much time you spend at work mm. and how much time you want to take away from that and give to your fucking self and build an empire. Because right now you're building somebody else's empire. Like literally just write down five days times four times 12 and just see how much fucking time you're wasting in a year. And then multiply that by 30 because most people stay in corporate for like 20, 30 years. And it might fire you right before it's time for you to even get your pension. So. <clears throat> Bro. And when you're dead, they got somebody else in the position tomorrow. So, yep. hey, do you, want, do you want to build something that can be passed down? It's not going to start your child over from, from scratch and zero. Or do you want to just start your kid over from zero? I mean, when do we stop, you know, passing down debt and nothing? You know, when do we start passing down businesses and, and properties and, and shit like that, you know? So oh. I, I, I would say think bigger picture and think, think selfless. Don't be selfish in this moment because people can stay in the nine to five because they're selfish as fuck. And they want to have a good life for themselves, but they don't want that. They don't think about their fucking kids. So be selfless. That's a big fact, too. Whole bunch of them, bro. Hey, we dropping shit. We dropping, yeah, hey, I'm we, we dropping big cow shit. I'm loving this, bro. For <laughs> real. Hey, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Uh, next point, legacy. How important is it for us to leave a legacy? Because you just touched on that. Uh, me and my brother, we were actually talking about this like last night for like hours is that sometimes, and you said it right to the T, is that we'll get the good nine to five job. And I realized that, hey, once I'm dead and gone, my kid is going to have to find another job and then their kids. But then with white families or families who's established, those kids don't even have to work and they just carry on that same business and they have employees. So how do we start getting into that mindset of saying, Hey, I got to do something that's just bigger than just me in this current moment in time. Yeah. Legacy is, is big, bro, because the importance of, I want to give my kids the option to go to college. I want to give them the option. Like they have the option to go or not. I want to give them the option to work with somebody or not. I want to give them the option to be entrepreneurs or not. I want to give them the option to be able to work in the family business or start their own business. So I feel like if that alone, <clears throat> just that freedom of choice, you know, because that's, that's a, that's, that's freedom within itself because we're not free right now. We don't, we don't get to choose what the fuck we do. We, you know, I, I mean, I'm choosing what I do when I wake up yeah. and things like that, but you know how it has to be like a, a bigger agenda for the community to be like, yo, let's get back to black wall street you know let's build something that we can pass down let's, and representation is big too so when do we get to the point where it's like okay uh we need to show younger you know kids even outside of my family you know because once it becomes bigger than you then it's something of like huge value so how can i be a representation to other kids and other families in other states and other countries to show them like yo this is possible for black people to to own a business or you know the the definition of true success isn't you know wads of money hoes rims on cars you know weed and, and this and that not in sagging true success is a black car in a wallet 
or a fucking like digital currency where niggas don't see shit and you pulling up in a in a in a ten, blacked out um Maserati with a tailor suit on and and you you ain't got to post a picture about it you ain't got to post a picture in your private jet you know true success is like completely night and day to what we see in our community as true success so i feel like the 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 importance of legacy and just generational wealth comes when we stop chasing riches and we start chasing wealth mm -hmm. in actuality, like in true shit, you know, because people want to be, oh, I want to be rich, I want to be rich, I want to be rich, I want to be like little baby, I want to be like little yada, I want to be like yeah. this and that. And it's like, bro, that's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> like, even, even sports, you know, it's, I hate that we're fed that, or it's an image that we have to, we can play like football, track, basketball, and be successful. Nigga, in this moment right now, a lot of professional athletes live in check, paycheck to paycheck. Literally. They don't got shit. Especially right now. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I'm talking yeah. about right now. So it's like, if we if we understood the importance of diversifying our portfolio, investing in real estate, investing in stocks, investing in this, owning this business, having multiple streams of income, you know, because that's what it, that's all it. Like once you understand that, that's the foundation of generational wealth. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we have to start at our own front door before we're like, okay, let's create generational wealth. It's like, all right, bet, let's do it. But it's like, where do we start? And I feel like it starts with education and understanding that these things that we're like preached and, and shown, we don't have to do that. You know, over here you have generation, like the importance of family because people are individual right now. We're so individually focused. So we don't understand that the Rockefellers, the Waldens and shit like that, family shit. It's like the importance of having not just a single solo person, but like, okay, I want my kids. It's, it's bigger picture because me, I want to get married to a woman that's a boss and it has a good head on her shoulder, and we have kids. And it's like, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. we have to understand the importance of that as well, too. So, I feel like it starts with a lot of um, ground-level ground shit before we get to the point where it's like, okay, you know, generational wealth, let's let's just get money and do whatever. You know, let's just build. We have to really, like, start. Like, we got to teach a six-year-old, you know. If you, can't, if you can't teach it to a six-year-old, you really can't. It's like, what the fuck are you, you teaching it for? So, I feel like it starts with just education and, and even just understanding different like money, just looking at money different, looking at just risk different, looking at debt different, um, understanding liability and asset, you know, at an early age, shit like that. But it could be something that's really simple that could lead people to shift in their whole mindset. And, and then they don't even under, realize that they're stepping into generational wealth because it's just something so natural to where they're like, oh, asset, liability. I don't want liability. I want assets. You know, oh, seven streams of income. I, I know how to do that. I got this passion. I got this job. I got this real estate. So I feel like it's, it just starts with just small things, really. And, and, and that, that leads to a, a bigger change within the, within the community as a whole, from representation to education um, and to just the way we live our life, the lifestyle we live, too. Like, That's real. That's real, bro. Speaking on assets and liabilities, what people don't focus on sometimes, and you know, you kind of mentioned it, is about our partners. Sometimes the woman that you get with, oh, bro. sometimes the Wait. man that gets with the woman, or a man with man, woman with woman, they could not bring something to the table. So, how do you yeah. find like yourself a solid partner? I need a partner. I am searching right now. If you're a lady that is very, <laughs> right. very beautiful and very He's important, right in and you have a business, and you <laughs> <laughs> hit my DM. No, nah, but. Uh... But um, um, I feel like finding that partner is, I feel like I feel like it, it starts with self. So you attract whatever you give off, you know. So if you, if I'm rocking a tailor suit, if I'm running the business, if I'm being a boss, if I, I'm getting shit done, that's going to attract a certain kind of woman. And if a woman is out, for women, if y'all are out here not shaking y'all ass, not on Tory Lane's quarantine radio shit. Quarantine, not, quarantine. Not, quarantine, 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 quarantine. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> If y'all not there, um, image is everything. So, I mean, if you, I was talking to a friend the other day and I was telling, we were talking about women wanting certain shit that they can't even get for themselves from from a man. They want that shit. So that's, that's some ugly shit. So if you want to attract a man, the right man, if you walk out in some Louboutins, you're not going to attract a, a Jay's ass nigga. You're not going to attract a Jordan ass nigga. So, I mean, if you don't want to attract a, a guy, a dude that's like on the street, you know, selling dope or just couch to couch, whatever, you have to carry yourself in a way to where it's like you give off energy to where it's like, bro, you can't really fuck with me. And you're not on my, you're not in my tax bracket. So you might as well not even shoot your shot at me. So yeah. a lot of people are, you know, they're hesitant to shoot at somebody like that because they know in their mind, I can't afford them. My, my, my mental is not on their level. Uh, my mindset isn't. My, my personality might not be. Uh, my way of life might not be on their level. So I feel like it starts with self and what you give off and what you 
what you show to the world as like, okay, this is who I am. And from that, bro, like you won't even get crazy. You won't you won't get a lot of crazy shit in your DM. You'll get emails before you get DMs because people feel like, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta come with them like hella professional, bro, because wow. they're they next level. So yeah, and it's also where you place yourself too. Are you going to the the local you know hole in the wall to like like turn up and twerk? Or are you going to a lounge? You going to a workspace? You going to you know um an upscale event? Are you going to a networking event? You know, product placement is big. So if you if you're on sale, you're on the market. You wouldn't place your your luxury shoe at in the fucking hood, you know, a uh, hole in the wall. You'll probably place that motherfucker at like a, at a um, speakeasy. That's so right. I, I feel like product placement is a big thing too. And you're a product. You're walking billboard. So sell yourself and go to a place where you want to where you where you think your target audience would be. You know. <laughs> hey, you breaking it down. Hey, that's real. That's, that's hey, piece. we all this motherfucker spit, bro. We hey, spit. Hey, two more piece. Product placement. You gotta have that. Hey, <laughs> product. I love placement. it. I love it. <laughs> I love it, bro. Um, confidence is a big thing. Being a young entrepreneur yeah. such as yourself, how do you maintain confidence in a big city like LA with fashion, with brand? How do you maintain that confidence? And second, how did you grow? I, I'm, I'm, I'm from Arkansas. So, I mean, I'm a country wow. kid. I, I moved here eight months ago. <laughs> I know that had to be a big adjustment, bro. Oh, yes. Cost yeah. of living is big. I mean, I love the lifestyle, but traffic is different. Um, cost of living, the homeless, the homeless population is really crazy out here. Um, there's a lot of fake people out here, so I mean, adjusting to that. But I know how to maneuver in it. I know how to maneuver in it, though. But uh, when it comes to confidence, bro, <clears throat> it's really just it's something that you build over time, just based on how you interact with people, um, and and really just knowing. Really, I start. It goes back to self. Everything goes back to self. You know, do you love yourself? Um, do you feel like you're beautiful or are you you handsome? Whatever the fuck you want to say. Um, do you feel like you dress nice? I feel like the, the, the threads you put on your body uh, cause you to be more confident. If you want to buy a different car because you don't like the way that car pull up when you pull up in it, that can boost your confidence. You know, we were talking about this. My homie Levi was talking about this on a live uh, with one of his friends that just bought a new car. And if, if somebody comes at you sideways about a material thing that you purchase, fuck them. Because that material thing can lead to you being a lot more confident within within yourself. Because you look at that shit like, damn, I bought that suit. Or well, look at me in this tailored suit, like I'm fly as fuck. Or hey, damn, I look, I just I, I bought that uh, Maserati. I bought that Mercedes. I did that shit. Like I'm I'm that nigga. So I mean, it, it goes back to just really just believing in yourself and just knowing like, yo, I'm that nigga. Or really your circle saying, uh, bro, look what you've done. Who's done this? Like who's selling this? Who's selling that? Who's inspiring this? Who's inspiring that? And I feel like also. Um, being authentic on social media and being transparent also in building a community, building a community helps build your uh, confidence because you get messages all the time saying, Oh my God, you inspire me. Yeah. Oh my God, keep going this and that. And all that stuff helps. Yeah. It helps a lot when it comes to like confidence, bro, because if one person at an event tries to talk shit on you, you got 30,000 people on social media, they fuck with you heavy. So you're like, bro, one person can just be like, whatever, like get out of my face, bro. Do you understand? The amount of people I'm inspiring and motivating. Do you, do you not understand where I came from and what I'm doing right now? So even just like understanding where you came from can give you so much confidence because, bro, where I come from, rats, roaches, hoes in the walls to L.A. selling some fucking gold tip shoes and doing marketing and branding for people and lifestyle stuff. It's like, bro, at that point, over time, it's like you just look back, you like, yeah, I'm. Uh, it just goes back to I'm that nigga. Like I'm doing something great. I'm the go. I am. I am great. Yeah. And it, I feel like we don't we don't even boost ourselves up enough because I don't do that. Yeah. I feel like it, it, I don't want to be big headed, and I'm never like that. But sometimes you really just have to sit or let your friends say like, "Bro, you the shit." Like, like, yo, keep that shit up. Like, don't I don't care what nobody say. So I feel like the people around you can help boost your confidence as well. Um, outside of you just really loving yourself and, and being 100 with who you are. And, and really just boosting your boosting your own head up. A lot of women do that well, you know. They get in the mirror, they boost themselves up, you yeah. know. <laughs> and don't let He's don't let you ask them. Yeah. Don't let you ask them, is that your hair? Like, damn right it is. I pay for it. They, yeah. they pay me. <laughs> so it's just even that kind of stuff. The small stuff, bro, can lead to so much more confidence um, in the way you like operate in business or just in life in general. <laughs> I love that, man. Um, you actually had a post, and I reposted it um, on my story, and it was really, really deep and I completely agree with it. Uh, you pretty much broke down how um, after this time, 97% of people uh, will go back, you know, to their ways and the 3%. And I've been preaching this to my friends. Like the moment that this quarantine hit as a content creator myself, I was actually excited because I knew that everybody would be on social media. I could do live <laughs> interviews. Like you could just adjust. 
Like you got to adjust. And I think, you know, even with people that's in my space with podcasts, they're getting really depressed. And I understand that, hey, you know, we can do a live interview and you can post it on your YouTube channel and everything's back to normal. You post it on your IGTV videos, all that. So how do people start learning how to adjust during this time <coughs> and not just sit there and just panic? Um, first, I guess I say it's not for everybody because a lot of people get upset when they see uh, me, anybody posting positive shit about, you know, being being able to be productive in this moment or having a different perspective on this moment because a lot of people are like, oh, people are grieving, people are dying, people are losing their jobs. I'm like, nigga, people die every day, people lose their job every day. And I, for one, I know what death is like. I've lost grandma, mom, yeah. dad, and mom, you know, yeah. so, and at the worst times in my life. So um, when it comes to grieving, I, I would hope you're not grieving for three months, you know, because that's that's for sure for anybody, you know, no matter what you're grieving over, that's a waste of fucking time. Three months, I would say go get a counselor. Um, so but for the people that <clears throat> are feeling down and don't want to feel down and want to feel inspired, I would say block out the negative information because there's a lot of bullshit being promoted on social media. And I would say follow people that uh, post positive shit um, that you want to see or you need to see. So engage with that more start to mute other shit that's really negative and posting uh, just bullshit, you know, follow people that post about people that are, you know, surviving from the coronavirus, po follow people that are posting about business or doing podcasts and doing informational shit like this, because it'll give you a different perspective on uh, what's currently going on. And, you know, it's, it's easy for us to pivot and have a different, a more positive perspective, but it's harder for other people that have been stuck in that nine to five and in that way of life to see a different perspective. So, um, I would say watch just even watching shit like this, bro, and being informed or just just hearing somebody else that looks like you be able to have a different perspective on it can inspire you to be like, yo, I'm gonna do this. Because you once they know what you've been through and know that you're you're going through the same shit they're going through, like everybody's on the even playing field. So even to just realize that everybody in the fucking world is on the same playing field is something that's huge because you got people over here. It's like which which group do you wanna be a part of? You know, yeah. you got everybody's on the same playing field. But you got a, a red team, you got a black team. You got the black team over here that's entrepreneurs. They're really getting their shit done. They're going, they're doing it. And you got the red team over here that's just really just chilling, you know, really upset about it, really worried about it, waiting on that 1200 to come in, you know. And it's like, bro, you got to pick a side. And yeah. whichever side you're going, you got to understand that you have support on both sides. You know, do you want the support of people that's like, yo, keep grieving, keep grieving. I'm grieving too. Like, this shit is sad. Or do you want the support from people like, yeah, it's sad, but hey, here's here's a plug to where you can like come up on this shit you know so i feel like it, it goes within self again towards like okay what do i really want to do uh do i really want to be productive or do i really want to just sit and and do nothing so i mean you have the opportunity you have the choice and i feel like we we fail to realize how much control we have over our life uh mm -hmm. in general you have a lot of control of your life regardless of what's going on around you like you focus on like mind the business that pays you and, and be proactive mm -hmm. don't be reactive you know i love that bro for yourself man what keeps you pushing What's that? Why every single day, every single morning? It's a lot of them now, bro. Like yeah. just from one, from one, it was just my mom and seeing how she how she struggled and everything mm -hmm. she uh, sacrificed to you know just invest in me starting this business because she didn't have shit. Uh, so that knowing where I came from, how how broke I was and how you know under underrepresented area, just seeing where my friends and just people I grew up with where they are, <clears throat> a lot of them are dead in jail or just back home. So that that keeps me going every day just to know that you know there's a purpose on my life and um and then. Like going back to when I said when something becomes bigger than you, um, that's very important because everything that I do has become like a lot bigger than me. It's a lot bigger than shoes. So every day I wake up, no matter what I'm going through, bro, um, I understand that if I give up, <clears throat> I'm not just giving up on myself. I'm giving, I'm giving up on my ancestors. Mm -hmm. I'm giving up on, you know, people like you or people that might come across my page and be inspired. The people that send me those messages every day, like, oh, I needed this post or you inspire me, you motivate me. I'm giving up on the future. Um, because there's a purpose behind what I'm doing, representation, shifting the narrative, and really show, like making a difference in the community, <clears throat> and just being that positive light that shines. So if I dim my light, then that's that pushes us back even more. So I understand that I have to keep pushing through that. Um, my circle keeps me going. That keeps me motivated because I have a very, very tight circle that um, it's very motivational. We go through shit together. We get through shit together. Um, so I feel like that's very important. Your circle will play a huge part in, in what motivates you and keeps you going. And then outside of that, just uh, my ability to see my future, you know, me really tapping into self and imagining, daydreaming and uh, manifesting, you know, that, that keeps me going because I know, I know for a fact, whatever you can fucking see in your head, 
you're not just seeing it for no reason. You know, mm, you, you, you can't real. you can't just see some shit that's not real. You know, you can't see something that's not feasible in your life. So I feel like me being able to see to drive by a house in Beverly Hills and imagine my family walking out of that crib and hopping in whatever fucking whip I want. Mm. I know that that's attainable. So I keep going, you know, so that that's some, that's just something that I feel like a lot of people should do more of. Um, <clears throat> And then just like I, I touched on, just looking back and remember where you were in this place uh, the same time last year, you know, um, I feel like being grateful, grateful is my word of the year. So I'm grateful for where I've come from and where I'm at right now. And then even being grateful to, to be able to make a couple, a couple racks off of just yourself, you know, it's like, okay, you have, you, you can't, you can't um, be the person that requires too much confirmation to keep pushing. You know, all I need is like a little bit and I'll keep pushing. So I feel like every, I'm always given that small amount of like confirmation that I need to keep pushing. And I feel like that's something you need to really pay attention to in your life too. Like if you get, if you get a small, a small confirmation, it could be, it could be $10 coming through a Venmo account because you was hungry, bro. Make that one of the biggest confirmations that's happening all year. <laughs> like swear. And you'll just keep pushing, bro. Uh, and, and 10 and try to make negative things less of a confirmation that you're going in the wrong direction. You know, most successful people make decisions fast and change their mind slow. So I made this decision to hop in this shit full time fast and I've changed my mind very slow because I'm still doing this shit. I love it. I love it, bro. Uh, before we wrap this up, man, I just want to say thank you for such a great interview. Last question, man. Uh, what's next for you, for your future projects, for your business, and also where can people keep up with your brand, all that good stuff? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> what's next for me, bro, is just remaining healthy and living through this shit, uh, keep, an insp keep inspiring people. I'll introduce more digital guides. Um, I'll be doing more. I do lives almost every other day, yeah. every day. So that's content that I'll keep coming. Uh, that might lead into like a podcast or, you know, vlog or some shit. I don't know. Hey, you need to start um, one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, and then for the shoes, whenever things get back kicking for that, uh, I'm going to introduce some, women he some women's heels. Um, and some unisex shoes. Um, sure. Whenever events get back going, I have a private events company out here. Uh, we host upscale private events on a monthly basis. So that'll get back kicking and growing. Um, I'll get back into um, more speaking. Definitely about to start speaking at colleges more. Uh, I speak on a lot of panels, uh, okay. keynote speaking and shit like that. So um, that'll get back kicking. And eventually, actually, she's on the live. We're, we're going to be working on... <clears throat> Uh, making textbooks for colleges and stuff. So uh, for social media and, uh, and, and and just branding and things like that, because it's becoming a really big thing in the community and uh, colleges are really tapping into it. So yeah. Um, yeah. Trying to, trying to create something to like just pitch to a college uh, based on the knowledge we have within social media and branding and stuff like that. I love it, man. Yeah. Hey, you drop facts the whole time, bro. So hey, I appreciate I'm a you. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna like, I'm gonna take some snippets and I'm gonna post it up uh, for sure like I do all, on all my stuff. Uh, so brilliant. yeah, me. hey, shit lit, bro. You know hey, how it is. It. You know how it is. Thank you, King. Hey, you be safe, uh, sir. Sure. I appreciate you, man. Thank Much you. love, King. Yes, sir. For sure.